<laughs> All right. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us again for another one of our exciting episodes of what's working on Pinterest or what to pin in December. I am Melissa Meganson. I am joined by David, who's also from Tailwind, and a former Tailwinder, <laughs> current friend, Madison Tucker, who uh, is here. She uh, left Tailwind to go start her own business, the true entrepreneurial spirit. So, Madison, if you'd like to give us a little overview of what you've been doing since Tailwind. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, I started my professional organi organizing business called Optimal Life Space. And Optimal Life Space really focuses on um, working with homeowners and small business owners and really maximizing the space that they have. And we do that by focusing on creating systems based around how you already use your home or office um, and create habits around those systems. So it's really just looking at how you're already using your space um, and then how we can improve it and kind of optimize it. Um, it's been a lot of fun. I've been doing it now for a couple months and just like a lot of you guys out there kind of, you know, running your own business or blog or anything like that. It's a lot of work and you learn a lot <laughs> so really quickly. Um, so I learned a lot while at Tailwind, um, but still learning new things every day. <laughs> and Madison has helped me before and she's great. But today we are here to talk about Pinterest. Yeah. And uh, David will be sharing some links in the comments, including a blog post where you can follow along and see all of the boards that we are talking about. And you guys are very special. You get a first glimpse at our new 2017 <laughs> Pinterest content calendar. Uh, that link will also be in the comments and you can download it there. And I literally just finished it last night. So, be sure to look it over, see if there's, you know, <laughs> see anything that's that's weird in there. And as we're going, we would love to see what you guys are pinning right now. And, you know, maybe what board you're focusing on or a certain pin that took off, you know, anything you'd like to share with us, we would love to see that information. And as we're going, it would be great to get your comments, your questions, and we'll answer them as we go. David will be fielding those for us and sending them over our way, and we will answer them to the best of our ability. All right, so I guess it is time to go ahead and get started. We need the, the, the screencast. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah. Sorry, it's been too long since we did this. <laughs> All right, so first up is women's fashion. And one thing that I noticed was that it's actually less wintry. Yeah. I mean, when I was looking through it also, it just, it is a lot less like mm -hmm. cold bundled looks than you would kind of anticipate for the very beginning of December. Yeah, and then in November, everything was so cozy and warm yeah. and... Lots of sweaters, lots of cable knits, yeah, uh, stuff like that. But then you get into December, and people seem to be looking towards like tank top season, yeah. <laughs> and it's it's something that's very indicative of Pinterest. People mm -hmm. are looking ahead; they're looking to the future. Um, I mean, there's even this pin here that calls out spring, yeah, fashions for spring, and. Yeah, this girl would be very cold. <laughs> yeah. This lady may not be, but and another thing that I noticed was a lot of workwear. Yeah, that is really interesting. I mean, maybe it's a because people are looking towards maybe like again like lots of layers. It's not like fully cold in December yet for everyone. You know, it's sort of like you've got to put on a lot of layers, take off a lot of layers, and so <laughs> it looks kind of like it's in trend with that a little bit. Yeah, and so it, some of the words that really stuck out to me were a uh, sweater cardigan, not coat, mm -hmm. but sweater cardigan, um, some of those ponchos, light jackets, workwear, again, that was really big. Yeah. Um, winter, a little bit, and also spring. So those seasonal words will help people discover your content a little bit better. And, mm -hmm. uh, and another thing was uh, just style in general. People are coming to Pinterest to be fashionable and to find that style. Yeah, I mean, I love that you kind of touched on the idea of, you know, Pinterest isn't always um, indicative of what's happening like this very second. It is like a place to be inspired and to kind of dream of pretty much anything you want. Like you could be bundled up in a coat right now, but you really want to be <laughs> looking for spring stuff. Yeah. And so it's, I mean, it's indicative of just sort of 
you know, what do you want to be looking at? You may not want to, people may not want to be looking at um, coats and everything in December. Right. And the colors are brighter. Yeah. Maybe they're just sick of those neutral, dark colors and they want to be looking towards the spring. I mean, it, I believe this is around the time that the big spring catalogs come out. They're always so forward moving. And that's mm -hmm. it, also with Pinterest, you're forward moving and forward looking. Yeah. All right, David, do we have uh, any questions? Uh, no questions yet. Um... Yeah, just, uh, actually, here's one. Um, they're loving the new showcase. What is the intent with Pinterest starting that, as they claim only a few percent of people actually go to the account? That's from Ann Smith. Thank you, Ann. Oh, that is interesting. Yeah, that's a very, very new uh, feature that Pinterest just put out. And, and uh, it's basically creating a showcase, a marketplace within your Pinterest account, so you can go there, people can purchase directly from there. We don't know much about it yet, but it is gonna be something that's gonna be very fun to look at and very fun to watch as we go forward. So I, unfortunately, I don't have a ton of information about it yet, but it's, I, I believe like Kate Spade has it, Target probably has it, Nordstrom, some of those bigger stores on Pinterest. So if you're curious, go and check it out. It's really neat. and. Pinterest has a blog on their business site about it, so you can learn a little bit more about it. All right, and if we do not have any other questions... Actually, we do have oh, one do. from Alicia Reed. Uh, she says, what recommendations do you have for businesses like hospitals or healthcare to be better on Pinterest? I think hospitals and healthcare have a real opportunity by digging into health and fitness. Mm -hmm. Those are huge, huge on Pinterest, and even you know healthy recipes. Yeah, and and getting into that healthy lifestyle, people are going to Pinterest to be inspired and to learn new things about their uh, their bodies and how to do better and be better. So there is a lot of inspiration out there that you can really latch on to, yeah. dig into, and you know, help people be healthier and not need to go to the hospital yeah. as much. Can yeah. I jump in on that one? Do you yeah. guys mind? So uh, I used to work for an agency uh, in town, and we, we looked after the largest hospital network in Oklahoma. And um, what we sort of discovered was that you're exactly right. Health and fitness and nutrition, mm -hmm. great. But it worked really well when we when we when we pulled in the locality as well. Mm -hmm. So specific to Oklahoma. So, you know, right. the, the Olympics are coming up. Who are the Oklahoman athletes? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, where, where can you go farm to table in Oklahoma? Um, you know, what are the best walks? You know, all of those mm -hmm. kind of things. So I, I'd highly recommend that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it is something that's always really difficult for businesses that um, aren't necessarily like creating content as far as like, you know, um, catalogs or have mm -hmm. a very like colorful or um, website to kind of pin. But um, also, you know, things like intro like accounting firms or accountants and stuff, you know, how are they supposed to be active on Pinterest? And one of the things that I have looked for and I like actually um, are when accountants are able to give or kind of curate content that's helpful for their own clients like this is how to be organized during tax season you know what can your clients find on Pinterest um, that really helps them um, and it creates a lot of value um, for your clients so. yeah yeah that's a good thought it's just looking at what is Pinterest about and finding yeah. your niche within that and there's so many different things that people go to the site for that typically you can find something that will fit. Mm -hmm. So we've got a couple of other questions and really they're about, um, one is about weddings and uh, I was wondering if you could just sort of give us a rundown of, of the different boards that we're going to see, the different categories. Sure, yeah, so we just started with women's fashion, then we're going to go into DIY crafts, uh, then education, food and drink, hair and beauty, which is pretty closely related to weddings we found, uh, then health and fitness, home decor, and we're going to round it out with holidays and events, which funny enough, you're going to see some wedding stuff in there. <laughs> we're not focusing on weddings this time around. We did last month. Uh, each month we're going to sort of mix up the boards a little bit depending on what the interesting trends are. We don't have an unlimited amount of time, so we can't look at every single board, but you can find those boards on the blog post that David shared. So it will be there and you can go and look. I'm about to share. Okay, that David will be sharing. <laughs> okay, and so 
we're just going to jump right back into DIY and crafts. One thing that I noticed this month are uh, there's fewer gift ideas than there were yeah. in the previous months. I mean, it's kind of crazy because just scrolling through, just until you got right here, mm -hmm. there's really hardly anything about Christmas at all. Right. <laughs> or really like the Christmas season, like winter in general. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that's because if you're going to make a DIY gift, you better do it ahead of time. <laughs> and so some of these, uh, these are in reverse chronological order. So from this What to Pin in November pin, we're starting in the beginning of December, which is where you see those more Christmassy, gifty ideas. Mm -hmm. And as we go through, it's, you know, very simple. Yeah gifts and ideas and you know as we progress through the month it starts to get a little bit less Christmassy and more you know general I, this would work in January or February it's mm -hmm. more general um, wintry ideas yeah uh, I thought I just wanted to point this out it was interesting that this one was so popular last year because the laughing crying face emoji mm -hmm. was the word of the year last year yeah. <laughs> So perhaps there's something to be found uh, in those trends that are happening this year. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you really want to make a post-truth wreath that may not be so cute as an emoji, <laughs> but th there are those ideas that can be gleaned. And yeah. again, I saw one down here that was for Star Wars, which came out last year, and we're going to see a number of those pins. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, another thing that I noticed was, uh, uh, where is it? There's um, some doily trees here. They were pinned in 2011. Mm -hmm. Or first created in 2011. Right. right. They're then, still relevant. Yeah. I mean, I that still like speaks so true to Pinterest. You know, it doesn't mm -hmm. necessarily matter. Um, you know, the life cycle of a pin is so interesting compared to most social platforms. So that is a good example of, you know, good content will kind of last the test of time. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And this is, you know, it's not an emoji. It's something that is evergreen and will last yeah. forever. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and so some of the words that really stood out to me in, in the descriptions that were getting a lot of free pins here were DIY, obviously, easy or simple, projects, inexpensive or free, mm -hmm. gift, gift wrap towards the beginning of the month, wood, wood is a big thing on Pinterest, people <laughs> love their wood. That's crazy. <laughs> like right here. Uh, printables, patterns, uh, Christmas towards the beginning of the month and ornaments towards the beginning of the month. Mm -hmm. At the end of the month it becomes a little bit more uh, generic and some sewing tips and that fabric is and organizing stuff like that yeah it's kind of interesting that there's not more um like ornaments diy ornament mm -hmm. how to create these ornaments and all that kind of stuff there's a few actually up there but i kind of thought that there would actually be a little bit more well and if oh, we compare it to november where there yeah there were more there people were, were just more. like ready to get their tree up mm -hmm. december one <laughs> yeah like and even in october there were a number and this <laughs> this dream catcher actually there's just a lot of christmas this. stuff in october there is yeah, so people, people are, are really thinking about it. Yeah, really preparing. Mm -hmm. This dream catcher was, I believe this is October, and then it was a pin mm. in December as well. That's really interesting. And I think that's because it is not tied to a certain time of year. Mm -hmm. It's something that is relevant anytime. That's a beautiful, seemingly very easy mm -hmm. DIY gift that people would be super impressed with. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing to keep in mind if you're you know, a crafter or a, a blogger that specializes in lifestyle. It doesn't matter when it's pinned if it's evergreen. Mm -hmm. You can do that any time of year and it will still be relevant. Yeah. All right, do we have any questions? Yes, we do. It's Yay. funny you should ask. Okay, so there's a, a really strong vein here. Three different questions. Um, from three different people asking about niches mm -hmm. that are, are maybe challenging in Pinterest. One is book blogging, uh, one is uh, a pet sitting business, and the other is a law firm. And really they're asking the same question, um, which is, you know, how do I use Pinterest to catch attention, uh, and especially of local people? 
wondering if you had any thoughts on that. Okay, so we had books, pets. law firm, and pets. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to start with the easiest one. <laughs> pets. Yeah. Animals are adorable. <laughs> you can... Uh, I actually helped a local animal shelter a few years ago get set up with their Pinterest, and so they would have, like, happy tails or... Mm -hmm. uh, funny dog shaming videos and pens <laughs> and things like that. So it's not about necessarily garnering all the attention for your website. It's about mm -hmm. building a community around what you are doing. Yeah, I think it, it, one opportunity for someone who's interacting with animals also is to show, like something I would be interested in is seeing what you like um, as far as animal care. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like how do you properly groom a dog? Um, how, sh like the quality of food, you know, kind of pinning about that kind of stuff because as a dog owner, I'm actually very interested. And if I can see like, oh, these are things that you're interested in care about, it also speaks to your business as well. Mm -hmm. So um, that's a nice opportunity there. Yeah, and with Instagram, if you're on Instagram, um, then you can pin from Instagram, either mm -hmm. through Tailwind, which we have, we've made it really easy, or through the website, and that'll give you a chance to showcase your actual day, you know, day in the life yeah. on Pinterest, and you can change the description so it says yeah. something like, Make sure to give your dog 20 minutes of play a day or whatever mm -hmm. the right description may be there. And so you can still drive people to your other social media as well as build your community on Pinterest. Yeah. And then next we had a book. Yeah. There's actually a lot of books on Pinterest. Yeah. It's, it's a pretty big niche on Pinterest. Mm -hmm. And um, if you just go and search use the search bar to say whatever your your say your thriller writer um, thriller books on Pinterest you can find different people different mm -hmm. boards different group boards potentially yeah go through sort of glean some information there what are people doing right what are people doing wrong and really learn how to uh, dig into that niche and get involved yeah law law firm law firm law firm is a uh, a little bit Depending on what you're doing, I guess. I feel like it kind of goes into the examples of that we were talking about earlier with like hospitals and then also like an account, like accountants, you know, mm -hmm. it's sort of in that same line of you're not necessarily making the most visual content on your day to day basis or your websites may, may not be like the most interactive. But it again, you have like really good opportunity to be like, OK, like, how do I organize my legal documents? Like, mm -hmm. what should I keep? How long should I keep documents? Um, what's important to me? Like, what would I need in a certain situation? Um, and but for me, because I'm kind of in that realm, like organizing documents is sort of like a big thing that I like. I would want advice on from a lawyer. Um, mm -hmm or just like even how to find a good lawyer, you know, yeah. just kind of giving some um, resources on how to kind of navigate that that realm. Yeah, everyday life things that you may not think about. Because mm -hmm. when you need a lawyer, you really need a lawyer. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so you better, better prepare for it. And I think there's there's a real opportunity there. Yeah. Okay, any okay. others? Okay, um, yeah, we do have some more. Um, so uh, Amanda Nell asks, do you think pinning new Christmas stuff will take off now? It's a little bit late. Mm -hmm. um, it is the very beginning of the month, so if you're going to do it, do it now. Do it today, right now. Yeah. And share it in the comments so that we can all pin it, repin it for you. <laughs> make it uh, go a little bit further. But as we're seeing with these trends, Christmas is starting to sort of fade out. It has a real big push in October, November, September. very beginning of December, but uh, if you really want to get those pens out, wait a little while, and then maybe the summer, I know it sounds weird, but the summer, put it up there, let Pinterest marinate on it a little bit, and get it into the system, and then it'll, it could start showing in December, and you can also learn, like, Mm -hmm. This board is more powerful. Yeah, like keywords, like looking at different keywords mm -hmm. um, of what you want to pin and really kind of actually like use that to your benefit. Like maybe right. you didn't get it out this year, but you can really have it optimized for next year. Yeah. I was going to say your calendar is so good for that. So I haven't seen the 2017 one, but Melissa's 2016 Pinterest calendar is super helpful for that because um, basically it runs in like two different timelines, <laughs> you know, so when you're actually pinning your own original content, it's so much earlier than you would ever anticipate. You know, it's like, like Melissa was saying, like months 
prior um, to when the actual event is. Um, and so it really kind of helps you keep on track, you know, having the calendar there and being mm-hmm. like, oh, okay, like I should probably be focusing on Christmas right now. Yeah. So it's really helpful. Yeah. So there is, there's a lag time with Pinterest that you kind of have to take into account, yeah. but yeah, it couldn't hurt to put it up now. Mm-hmm. So uh, another great question from Amanda uh, Polyak is, what are the most popular keywords to include in pin descriptions in December? And uh, how many should we aim to use for each pin? Ooh, over all of December, that's... Um, some of the ones, just looking at my notes here, Christmas is one that pops out a lot. Uh, simple, simplicity is important this time of year mm-hmm. because people really <laughs> want to get through these holidays. They're already overwhelmed. <laughs> yeah, they're already <laughs> overwhelmed. They're already looking to get through it basically yeah um uh quick easy different projects gift ideas last Mm -hmm. minute gift ideas and as far as how many to include uh depends on how long your description is don't just say like delicious yummy great chocolate chocolate chip awesome simple simple christmas yeah (laughs) (laughs) don't keyword stuff yeah unnecessarily uh, create a story out of your description yeah. and fit in those keywords where they make sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I guess like the example I always loved when um, explaining or talking about pin descriptions to people is sort of like the idea of um, like using your example instead of just a, a cookie, like a chocolate chip, chocolate chip cookie. You know, you have the opportunity to be like warm, delicious, easy, homemade chocolate chip cookies that your entire family will love during the mm-hmm. Christmas season or giving it to your coworkers for a gift. Like being able to like put so many different keywords in there yeah. but actually make it sound good. Um, and it makes it more inviting mm-hmm. for people to actually like engage with your pin as well. Yeah, so. yeah that's very true. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's head back into what to pin. Okay, these questions are awesome. So please yeah. keep them coming. We love to hear that. Okay, so education. I know we have a lot of people interested in education out there, and we haven't focused on it much in the past month, so I really wanted to look at it this month. Mm -hmm. Uh, One thing that I noticed just right off the bat is these descriptions are longer. You can't really see it as we hover because Pinterest cuts them off, but if you click in, they are so much longer and so much more detailed. Uh, That was a bad... Just take my word for it. <laughs> they're in there. They're a lot longer. It's they're talking about like what the kid actually gets from each of these different things and the different ideas and the different classroom activities. So mm-hmm. it's really great to have that long super good description that people teachers are looking for Mm -hmm. that's so helpful for teachers that are actually looking for this content but then also like think of the keywords that um pinterest is picking up on you know again it's like that opportunity to really maximize your pin is to just like really give people very clear ideas of what they can do with that Mm -hmm. idea or that product so it's it's great yeah and and again we see star wars here star wars came out Uh, in December and people were super excited about it Uh, that's one thing to pay attention to what's happening in the world right now what are Mm -hmm. those different movies or TV shows that you can latch on to and bring into the classroom to make kids excited Mm -hmm. and keep it relevant and uh, something like Star Wars I think is always going to stand (laughs) the test of time which is a benefit but it doesn't necessarily have to be that way so although Pinterest is a forward-looking idea space it's also something that you can find that content that's related to more topical items i mean it's all based on like what people are looking for right so like if their kids are loving star wars right now and it's the first time that these children are interacting with star wars the teachers parents are really going to be looking for okay what Mm -hmm. can i introduce that's creative or educational um having to do with star wars so yeah it's like trends and what pinterest is picking up on but really it's also what people are searching for yeah, yeah, and Pinterest is a search engine. Yeah. And another thing that stood out to me was the mix of valuable ideas and information to teach kids mm-hmm. mixed with the seasonality. Yeah. So although there aren't that many Christmas specific pins in here, when they are, it's fun and it's something that kids can latch onto because it's in the moment, it's in the season, and I mean, the Sporax snowflake looks like a lot of fun to make (laughs) (laughs) so it's something that kids are taking the time to learn and they're getting into the christmas spirit here's another one so uh 
different ideas for STEM activities and just, you know, bringing the seasonality in. Yeah. Elf on the shelf. I do think, I mean, again, because I'm not a teacher, my initial thought for this was, oh, I'm, like, really surprised that there aren't more Christmas, um, winter-related activities going on. But then, like, also kind of thinking about it, you know, teachers have to be so organized and they have to plan so far ahead. Um, And so, like, once thinking a little bit more into it, I was like, okay, like, it actually makes more sense that, you know, teachers are already forward thinking, like, okay, Mm -hmm. what can I do when my kids come back from spring or from Christmas break? And um, once we start start that, like, spring semester. So it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. And some of the keywords that stood out to me in education were crafts, kids, STEM or STEAM, so the science, technology, engineering, math, I believe, Um, getting kids involved in those. The Christmas, a little bit towards the beginning of the month, classroom, Mm. students in the different grades. So if it is specifically for first through third graders, put it in there. That's very important. I can imagine that being like super important. (laughs) It's like, if I'm looking on here, I'm a teacher, I'm very busy. It's like, I want to get some ideas on this particular (laughs) group quick. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. So that's a big thing to call out. Yeah. Uh, Also templates. So whether it be this subscribe subtraction template or ideas for cute board activities, those templates are really important to teachers as well as games, making Mm -hmm. learning fun is the best way to get a kid involved. I know when I was in school, that was was the best. (laughs) Those are the ones like you remember, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. The Jeopardies and (laughs) stuff like that, that those are the ones that stick with you and you get to learn something. Mm -hmm. All right, do do we have questions? We do, yes. Um, uh, A question from uh, Brenda and Kaylee uh, is that uh, um, what do we do when you implement all the keyword and SEO optimization, but your traffic decreases? What do we do when our traffic isn't going the right way on Pinterest? Audit your traffic. So um, our CEO came up with a really amazing step-by-step walkthrough of how to understand your traffic from Pinterest and how to um, like go through your Google Analytics and figure out where that traffic is coming from and why it could have stopped. So in the example in that blog post, someone had a ton of traffic from Pinterest and then it all of a sudden just dropped off. Mm -hmm. And after auditing her traffic, she found out that it was coming from one pin that was years old and it had finally just burned out. And so understanding where that traffic is coming from is really important because it could just be driven by one pin or you could learn that maybe my pin descriptions that I was using before were better or the images that I were, was using before were driving more traffic more consistently. Mm-hmm. And so just getting into your analytics and learning what's happening there is so, so important. Yeah. I mean, also, like, I've always said this, but that's my favorite part about Tailwind is sort of it takes the mystery out of it, you know? Like, you can really, if you take a minute, which understandably is very difficult when everyone is so busy, but, you know, kind of diving in and seeing like, okay, like, what am I actually looking at right now instead of just pinning blindly um, and really utilizing Tailwind as a tool. And we'll get that link to you after the fact or uh, at some point. You will get that link and if you... It's in there. Okay, good. David found it. David's on it. Yeah. Awesome. For once. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, do we have any other questions? Um... Uh, yeah, uh, it was asked, um, Abby asked, are we only looking at the, the broad education board? Mm-hmm. Uh, and I was wondering if you could t- uh, just kind of remind us all how we go about finding uh, what you're looking at on your mm-hmm. screen. Yeah, so we are paying attention to the Pinterest categories and not digging into the different exploratory niches on Pinterest. So I'll switch the... Okay, go okay. Go. get the camera back over here. We are looking within these, so these different categories, paying attention to the most popular ones and what's happening within those categories for each month from the previous year. So as you can see here, education, it's super broad. It's not going to be focusing on elementary, middle, high school, any sort of education. It's just that big group overall, and we're looking at our users' pens from the previous year that performed well within this month. So hopefully that helps answer that question a little bit. 
That was good. <laughs> All okay, right. Let's All keep right. going. Okay. So we're already here. Might as well. Next up is food and drink. My favorite. Yes. <laughs> this is like my number one reason why I go on Pinterest. I'm obsessed with looking at food. <laughs> yeah. And they make it look so good. I know. Everything. Even things I don't like. I know. I want to eat. Luckily, my food looks exactly the same whenever I make it. <laughs> of course. Of course. So right off the bat, one thing that I noticed was um, everything's very hearty. Uh-huh. Yeah. And especially towards the beginning of the month. Let's see if I can get to the beginning of the month here. I, I think we have a lot here. We're reaching it. We're getting there. There it is, I think. Yeah. Okay. So there's not a lot of Christmas, I again. The, the very first thing is Oscar. Is that it? No. Well, we have both. But I love that. <laughs> yeah, that was big in November, the very end of November. Uh -huh. And then we switch over and we get into Christmas. Yep. But Christmas is only at the very, very beginning of the month. Mm -hmm. So... Um, it's it's the food that you know you could probably see on at Christmas dinner that's mm -hmm. towards the beginning of the month and uh, yeah this was like less surprising to me though mm -hmm. like everything else you know like education and then um, what one were a style like women's fashion I really was anticipating more of like okay like I'll see Christmas holiday stuff mm -hmm. or like coats and all that kind of things but you know food is one of those things that kind of transition out transitions through the yeah. more holidays and they kind of like stick to seasons you know like I'm cold I really want some like good hearty food right now yeah. so I was this was a little bit more like I anticipated this a little bit more rather yeah. than the other ones lots and lots of crock pot yeah which makes sense you know again I'm you're getting busy. hungry now yeah <laughs> <laughs> we haven't had lunch yet this is yeah. a bad idea let's just go eat some food <laughs> Yeah, so lots of set it forget it type mo type foods. The easy one thing that really stood out, which was odd, is so many breakfast pins. Well, yeah, you have so many like families in town this like this season. You know what I mean? I'm so guessing. December, you have a lot of in laws and cousins and friends and family. So it's like you gotta feed them all, lots, all the time. <laughs> lots of uh, breakfast and lots of drinks, alcoholic yeah. beverages. Yeah. Which could be related there. <laughs> and then we have our one novel uh, healthy pin. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. There's probably some more. But. <laughs> there are a few in here, but it is mostly like it's not quite swimsuit season. We don't need eating. to make our New Year's resolutions quite yet. Yeah. But as we get through the month, it does get a little bit healthier. Mm -hmm. So gluten-free, um, cucumber, avocado rolls, some of these things that are a little bit lighter mm -hmm. tend to be towards the end of the month after you've already gorged on all of the things that your grandmother made for Christmas yeah. and now it's time to get serious because New Year's resolutions. <laughs> Always. Every year. <laughs> and yeah, it's a little bit more agnostic towards the end of the month so it's not so I'm busy, I gotta do things, I gotta make hearty food. It's mm -hmm. more this is just something that you can eat any time of year. I don't think Thai chicken ramen is going to go out of style anytime soon. Yeah. And some of the words that stood out to me in the keywords and in the descriptions were easy, simple, fast, the different dietary needs. So we saw a few gluten-free or paleo, things like that. Um, crock pot was huge. Breakfast mm -hmm. was huge. And meal prep. Was simple also an education? Was that one of the mm -hmm. keywords? So they've been in almost all of them. You know, like people are coming to Pinterest to really find quick, easy, inspiring things that they can kind of implement now or save for later, but yeah. I think that's interesting. Better their life and save some time. Yeah. Who doesn't want that? <laughs> <laughs> so I have a question from Amy Wilson. Um, she says, wouldn't someone looking for Christmas or gift ideas just search for that? What's the big deal about not seeing them right now? And then I asked her to clarify a little and she said, I guess I just don't understand the freaking out about not seeing holiday stuff right now. And I was wondering <laughs> if you guys could talk a little bit about... Um, about the time lag that you might need for, for, for Pinterest and how, um, how, the, how the search, uh, mm -hmm. uh, how that is impacted by, by search. Okay. How long it takes things to get into the search right. and things like that. Right. Okay. So gifts are going to be one of those things that people might be putting on secret boards too. Mm -hmm. um, and gifts, gift ideas are going to be really popular right now, even if we're not seeing them. So within search, it's still important to have those ideas out there and make sure that you have the word gift in those descriptions and have that, 
and a, a gift ideas board that's maybe public, especially if you're selling something. So then people can save it, uh, pin it to a secret board, things like that. And I'd, people might be freaking out about not seeing a lot of traffic from it uh, on Pinterest right now, not seeing a lot of repins, but it is something that's out there. And also gifts, there's always a reason to give gifts. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> there's Mother's Day, Father's Day, Birthdays. birthdays baby showers, things like that. Yeah. Right, so how, how far in advance do you think you should pin things in general? Uh, it really depends. Um, you can, I, I really think that gifts are something that you can pin year round. And if you have it pinned, you could, you could maybe repin it again as we get into the Christmas season. So once it's really in people's minds and thinking about Thanksgiving and Black Friday, things like that, maybe get it back up into the feed so that people can see it again. Yeah, that's kind of interesting because some of the stuff in DIY, I was kind of noticing actually that, you know, they weren't necessarily Christmas themed or um, winter themed, but it's like they're populating for a reason. Mm -hmm. And it probably is because, or one of the things that I noticed is because there's a lot of things that you can make that, but you can give like all year round, oh, yeah. you know what I mean? So like there was a DIY bulletin board that would be super cool for right now um, to give, but you can make it a little bit more like Christmassy right now. And then you can do that same pin, that same project in the spring and make it a little bit more fresh. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, that's also kind of interesting. Yeah, there was one about coffee, I mean, you yeah. need coffee year round. You just take off the Santa. But I mean, just from your like calendar and stuff, you know, it's you've had it always be like a couple months prior yeah. to when you actually like need it to be relevant. Right. So Amy says that was exactly my point, Melissa. Uh, you would just search for the word gift. Mm -hmm. So great. Um, now Brenda has an interesting question. Do you think paragraph form descriptions work best or multiple short keyword phrases? I'd say paragraph form. People are going to Pinterest to be inspired. They don't want to see just shirt, men's shirt, you know, stripes, things like that. And they want to see your husband will look so handsome in this striped button up shirt, things like that. Things that really tell the story are going to be more powerful on Pinterest. Mm -hmm. And it, they will show, so show up in search still. Yeah. But it draws people in and gives an emotional connection to those keywords and to yeah. that pin. For me, I also just, like, I think it probably could be, like, what you prefer, I guess, but it's also, like, I think for me, the biggest thing is getting to the point. It's, like, does your description actually tell me what I need to know about your pen? Like, right. does it inspire me? Does it help me with my problem? Do I want to save it? You know, it's, like, are you telling me what I need to know? I think mm -hmm. it's, like, so important. Yeah. I have a little something to say about that as well. Um, so I used to be a search engine optimization specialist and um, one of the things that you should be thinking about and maybe the most important thing you should be thinking about is a concept called click-through rate, which is basically of all the people who see it, how many of them are motivated to actually click and go and look at that piece of content. And if you can make a piece of content that has a really high click-through rate because it has a great description, then you're gonna be winning and likely the search engines will um, will favor you. Both. Uh, especially on Google, but uh, I imagine that that also happens on Pinterest mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, yeah, that, that is one of the things that goes into the smart feed. So how busy, how much traffic is this site getting? Mm -hmm. And so the, it's only going to help you to make those descriptions that tell a story. Yeah. All right, so if there's no more questions. Nope. All right. Flip back over and head over to Hair and Beauty which is another one that we haven't talked about too much in the past, but wanted to jump on today. And uh, one of the things that I noticed for hair in particular is that it's very braid heavy. Mm -hmm. Lots of braids. I feel like that's just been trending recently. <laughs> mm -hmm. Or I mean, it's been trending now, but then also like obviously this was last year, but um, yeah, this was actually kind of another one that I, it was a little bit more expected that it would look this way. It's not, you know, it's hair and beauty. It's kind of passes through seasons and, and holidays and stuff. It is more like trends based on year, I feel. Yeah, right? yeah, I agree. I agree. And also something that I noticed was in the previous months, the eye makeup was a little bit lighter and, and almost felt more wintry to me. Mm -hmm. Then in December, it's all rosy. There's lots of rosy colors and 
that, that, that rose gold. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting to see that. And he, see here we have a little bit of bridal makeup and um, different updos that you could do for your wedding. So weddings just sort of permeate everything mm -hmm. on Pinterest. They really do. Like recently I was looking for flowers, just like flower arrangements. Like every other one was a bouquet, you know? So yeah. I was like, no, I'm not getting married. <laughs> I mean, they look nice. But, yeah. And, you know, you could use this for yeah, a night out with your boyfriend or for a wedding. Mm -hmm. So it's one of those things that's sort of always relevant. Yeah. And I mean, I feel like particularly if you're a blogger um, and have, you know, hair and beauty topics, it's so nice that you can really repurpose your content. You know what I mean? Like, again, like you said, like this would be fantastic to, you know, show people like, look, this would be great on a date night going here. Um, but then also it's like, this is also great for like a holiday party. So mm -hmm. you can really kind of reuse that. True. Maybe that's what people are thinking with the rose gold. It's not yeah. quite red. It's still Christmassy. Yeah. We saw that kind of like pinky color also in women's fashion. That's true. That's true. Uh, and one thing I did want to point out is some of these nail trends, those are things that are going to change over time. So while the one finger painted a different color, it's still a, a big trend right now, but it's one that's been a trend for a few years. Mm -hmm. A trend in particularly in nail design right now that's seemingly brand new this year are the coffin nails, which are a little morbid, but they're kind of shaped like a <laughs> coffin. And bigger towards your finger and then taper at the end so mm -hmm. that's one thing that's important to keep in mind are again those trends what's happening right now yeah and even though pinterest is less of the moment than other platforms there's still going to be those of the moment searches that are happening and if you can get on it pretty quickly and be trendy as the trends are happening you're going to have more success going forward yeah like like you said earlier it's still a search engine mm -hmm. people are going to come on here and look for things that you know, are timeless and then also things that are a little bit more trendy. Yeah, so. definitely. All right. Do we have questions? We do actually. And one specific to hair and beauty. Um, and, and I suppose it has ramifications elsewhere. But Amy again asks, um, how did you find current hair and makeup trends? I feel like half the pins I see are from like popular in 2012 mm -hmm. on Pinterest. So um, how do you find things that are happening right now mm -hmm. on Pinterest? You could add in uh, the year. So beauty trends 2016, beauty trends for 2017, things like that. And get those of the moment trends. But also if you go to Pinterest and look at those categories, a lot of times newer pins will be in there. So you can go to hair and beauty and makeup and see what's trending. And uh, thankfully with beauty trends in particular, less so I guess with fashion, it's going to be more classic. So a smoky eye is probably not gonna go out of style anytime soon. A pea coat is probably not gonna go out of style anytime soon, but you can find those newer trends on Pinterest. And I feel like they do tend to happen on Pinterest and really reach the masses there. Yeah, I feel like searching for 2016 would be good. And then, you know, once you start interacting with like a type of content Pinterest recognizes it and pulls in more of that content mm -hmm. so that'll probably help you as well very true yeah okay great um, let's let's keep going let's okay. do another one yeah we are getting a little bit low on time <laughs> so we'll come on over and look at health and fitness this was one that we see a lot more pins in December than we have in the past, yeah. in the previous months, and pretty sure that's because of the new year. Yeah. We were talking about that, and I, like, my personal opinion, I was like, like whenever I'm looking for um, different exercise stuff, I generally need more motivation to get going than I would with, like, a cute hairstyle. It's like, oh, I'm going to go try my, the hairstyle right now. It's like, but with working out, it's like, I'm going to need a little bit more motivation. Maybe I'll find a few more pins. Like, <laughs> Some variety so yeah so it's really interesting to see just how many more yeah. pens there are now and then how much people are really looking to get a little bit healthier mm -hmm. and I noticed it was kind of yoga heavy there's a lot of yoga in here more so than previous months Maybe people are traveling a lot in a car or an airplane. Maybe. Like, I need a stretch. <laughs> <laughs> I need a minute. <laughs> There's also a lot more healthy snack ideas. And so if you are uh, 
leaning towards the health and fitness category, I would recommend putting up those healthy snack ideas because people have been gorging. They've been eating all the mac and cheese and mashed potatoes that they could possibly stuff into their face recently. And they're looking for something a little bit healthier. I mean, I actually think that kind of goes in line with the lawyers and the um, people working with pets and mm-hmm. um, bookstores. You know, it's it that's actually sort of like what um, a similar tactic, meaning if I'm a personal trainer, like the obvious route is to just go ahead and pin um, physical things, like things that I'm doing. Like you see these, you know, five minute full mm-hmm. body workouts. It's a step by step. Like that's kind of the obvious thing to go with. Um, and they are very effective and really great on Pinterest. However, adding that extra value to your clients is going to be putting like meal plans, you know, right. like, hey, along with this workout, go ahead and add um, this additional information, try these foods. And so it kind of is like a same tactic like we were talking about earlier. Mm-hmm. Not yeah. just focusing on like what you physically do, but like the additional information that's helpful. Yeah, what people are actually looking for. Mm-hmm. Even if they're yeah, not looking specifically for what you're doing, you're building a community and curating a place for people to come to learn. Yeah. Uh, another thing that stood out to me is this self-care. It's not specifically a health or fitness related, as you would think but it's just how to take care of yourself. So if you are, say, a psychologist, this is something that you can, this is a niche you can get into that's very big on Pinterest and that people are looking at and they're looking to better themselves. Mm -hmm. And so you can pin things like this and people are going to be interested in it, obviously, because it was one of our top pins last year. Mm -hmm. Like anxiety. (laughs) Yeah. During the season. Traveling a prayer, yeah. So health and fitness is not necessarily just doing all the crunches you possibly can. It's also taking care of your mind and taking care of your community, your spirituality, everything like that. And some of the words that that stood out to me in these descriptions are yoga. Again, there's a ton of yoga in here. Workout, exercise, tone, snacks and weight loss. People are gearing up for that New Year's resolution. Got to get that weight down, got to get that workout plan in place. And so this is a really good time of year for health and fitness. Yeah. All right. Do we have any questions? Yes, um, we do. So um, Amy's asking, Amy Wilson's asking, uh, do you find some platforms are better for finding content like the app or the mobile site or the desktop site? I haven't noticed any difference, really, between any of them. It just depends on where you are. Mm -hmm. So if you're not at a desktop all day, you're going around picking up your kids or at the grocery store waiting in line, the app's going to be better for you. Yeah. Whereas Mm -hmm. a desktop, if you're at work and you're trying to avoid going to a meeting or something, don't do that. I'm not (laughs) suggesting it, but then you would be on your desktop more. What about the differences between Instagram and Pinterest in that regard? How are they different for finding content and how might marketers use them differently? <laughs> well, Pinterest is pretty much all mobile. Yeah. So you better be uh, mobile optimized if you're leaning in on Instagram versus Pinterest. And Instagram also, you're not going to be driving as much traffic as you would with Pinterest. Instagram is very much more focused on brand building yeah. and getting brand awareness out there, getting people aware of what you are and what you're doing. And you're not curating a community. You're showing off a day in the life. Mm-hmm. It's kind of interesting though, also because of just me personally, like how I use Pinterest and Instagram differently as far as looking for content. I'll come on Pinterest and put more of like a phrase in um, where I'd be like, um, garland or like mantle decorations using garlands or something like it's a little bit easier it's a little bit more relatable or closely tied to google and i kind of talk to them very similarly however on instagram i find myself using more like keywords and it's based basically on like hashtags i don't think that's the only way like there's obviously many ways of searching for content on instagram but just like how i generally use it um it's a little bit different. And then I know the content's gonna be different, right? So like Pinterest, you see these longer pins, generally a little bit more text heavy, obviously depending on what you're looking for. Um, and then Instagram is going to be a little bit shorter um, as well. So, and then again, with Pinterest, I like that whenever I find a piece of content, it's really easy to just go ahead and click all the way through to the website. 
um, Instagram, it really is, um, like you can usually go to someone's profile and kind of click over through that, but it is like I'm looking on Instagram and staying on Instagram and being inspired right on there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so, a good point. Yeah, You're on Instagram to be on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do we have time for another question here? Yeah. Right sure. now? Okay, good. Um, so Ashley, uh, sorry, uh, Alicia Reed asks, do you think that having more boards with specific topics is better or less boards um, with broader content? I tend to lean towards more boards with more specific content, but you can have like a more broad board too. Uh, that just depends on how much you're pinning. Because if you- I was gonna say, <laughs> how much are you pinning? Yeah. <laughs> so if you're a food blogger, it's going to be a really good idea to have more boards that are very specified. Like mm -hmm. I, I've seen very successful food bloggers that have five cake boards. That's cheesecake and chocolate cake and strawberry cake and mm -hmm. cake for kids, things yeah. like that. And those are more likely, the more specific boards are more likely to be picked up in those very specific searches. Mm -hmm. And therefore people that are going to find exactly what they need and exactly what they're looking for in that moment rather than a generic, uh, I'm starting to plan a party, maybe I wanna do this or yeah. this, things like that. Yeah, for me it's like how much time do you have, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's like that is amazing because you can really, again, like have it super specified and people can pick it up in a search engine, but if you don't have time to pin to all of them, mm -hmm. then don't make them all. Yeah. <laughs> because you get overwhelmed but, like yourself and then Pinterest seems cluttered and then you just, it just, <laughs> isn't organized. Right. She says five to ten minutes per week. Oh yeah. And then we have another question. Um, if I pin the same pin uh, over and over, doesn't it just clutter up my boards? Um, yeah. Not necessarily. You can space those out uh, and as pins get pushed down in the feed and get pushed down in your uh, your uh, board, then people aren't going to see it as much. Yeah, I wouldn't have like twenty of the same pins with <laughs> back to back a fifty pin <laughs> yeah. board. But it's it's not necessarily bad practice to repin things, especially if you're yeah. changing up the description mm -hmm. and trying new keywords and. Yeah, maybe it's uh, like with the cakes. Yeah. If it's a chocolate cake that also could be used for a kid's birthday party and also just generic cakes. Then pin it to all three. Yeah. Space them out a little bit. Yeah. I, I mean, I always like that when you're, because repinning, you're pinning the same thing over and over. I mean, it is helpful in a certain way. Um, and so like, but it's all is about, it's all about your user's experience also. So like, if I'm super interested in that pin, but then I go to your board and I see like your entire board is that one pin, then I lose interest really quickly yeah. compared to like, if I see it again, like that's fine. But like, what's in between those two pins? Like, is that other information good as well? So like, I, yeah, it's. I'm totally fine to repin them, I think. I do too. <laughs> okay, great. Cool. Okay, so on moving to the on. next one. Okay. Home decor. My fave. Yeah. Besides food. This is a good one for <laughs> Madison, given her uh, optimal life space. So right away, I noticed that there's no Christmas. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Nothing yeah. is Christmassy. Nothing is even all that wintry in here. Yeah, it's like pretty like light, bright, things that you would expect to see kind of in the spring. Mm -hmm. You know, you see things right here, like, like it's a white room with some tulips and stuff. Like I was actually surprised by this one. I thought there would be more Christmas. How do I decorate a mantle? How mm -hmm. do I make my house smell good, feel good? So I was a little bit surprised by this. And organization was one thing that was just huge. And I think it's because of New Year's resolutions again. I people are wanting to get organized? Yeah, I'd like to hope so. I'd like to always think that people are <laughs> focusing more on being organized, but I mean, it is something that I've seen a trend in. You know, there's a few popular books out right now about organizing, and so it's for the first time people are kind of thinking about organization and simplicity and kind of being mindful. So, and what having things in your space does to your mind and your anxiety, mm -hmm. like, you know, having cords disappear. You know, even you can just tell how much cleaner one looks to the other. Right. So, yeah, but it is surprising that it's during the holidays. The colors are so much cooler. Yeah. It's a lot of stark white, uh, mm -hmm. these grays here. I feel like the colors are pretty similar to what we, again, have seen in women's decor and makeup. Mm -hmm. Like that gray palette, that those kind of tones, it's kind of what we, we've right. already seen. Yeah, 
in, in November for women's fashion, that was very much the color palette. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was also interesting how much wood. <laughs> so much wood. <laughs> Bringing it back up from DIY. <laughs> Man, people love wood. I, I'm going to blame <laughs> Fixer Upper for that and the, the love of shiplap Just on all that HGTV. show. <laughs> yeah. People love their shiplap. And that's something to pay attention to is what are those... If you're into home decor, what are those popular shows? And what are those things that you know, Joanne is talking about on Fixer Upper? And mm-hmm. Pinning those things that people are looking towards and looking for, even if obviously these are not Christmassy. So yeah. you can pin those year round. Mm-hmm. And the organization and things like that, people are going to be, especially right now, looking for how to organize their life. But it's also something that is year round. I feel like just kind of coming back to the conversation we're having, whether to have like more broad boards or to have more specific boards, I actually think this is probably a super relevant um, example because if I'm looking for home decor, like just thinking about it right now, it's like if I'm thinking about painting my room, I'm not going to be thinking about it seasonally. I'm going to be thinking about it more based on like trends, like what's in trend in mm-hmm. general, just throughout the year, throughout the year before. And so it's a little, it's more like long-term decisions compared to like, if I'm looking at decorations, we'll probably see more Christmas type of stuff. So right. like if I'm, if I really am focusing on home decor, having it be more specific so that it doesn't just, you're not, people aren't assuming that, mm-hmm. um, I don't know, I'm kind of like babbling here, but, <laughs> uh, you know, that's probably why we're not seeing so many Christmas stuff. Yeah. And there's a lot of you know, DIY home makeover things, and that's yeah. what people are looking towards. They're looking towards starting anew, starting fresh. Mm-hmm. So the words that jumped out to me in the descriptions for home decor were organization, wood, anything wood related again, they love it, makeover, <laughs> DIY, space, yeah. so you know, clearing up your space, decluttering your space, uh, wall decor, so be it putting up uh, pictures or wall hangings of some kind. Those are very popular. Then kitchen, lots of kitchens, and minimalistic. That's, like, very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very excited about all of those. <laughs> okay. And we have one more board. So okay. we're g- let's, let's get let's do through it. that, and then we're going to answer all your questions. Yeah. Well, Sarah Arnold says, you're giving me some great ideas. Thank you for doing the research. Oh, Just well, to thanks, go. Sarah. That's great to hear. I'm glad you guys have stuck around with us for this long. Holidays. So holidays and events. What a perfect one to end on with Christmas being right around the corner, frighteningly close. We're a little terrified. (laughs) It is coming up kind of quick. (laughs) So in the beginning of the month, it's so Christmassy. As I say, now we're seeing some Christmas pins. Super Christmassy, but it's all easy. Yeah. It's all very simple. As I say, is one of our keywords simple? It is. <laughs> We're just keeping the trend going. In fact, it is. Yeah, so there's lots of really easy gift ideas, easy um, decorating ideas. This doesn't look easy, but it well, is it's, pretty. I know, it's kind of crazy that you're seeing, you're still seeing a lot in November. Yeah. So. Yeah, and so November like was pretty Christmassy, mm-hmm. and so it, it seems to be clustered in, within the holiday and events section that the last few weeks of November and the first few weeks of December are heavily Christmas. That makes sense. Yeah. So people are scrambling. (laughs) Yeah. They're thinking, oh, I have my gifts. I need to wrap them. Or, oh, gosh. Christmas party. Can't believe I forgot about my coworker. Got to get her something. Yeah. Um, There's an empty spot on the tree. Things like that. So it's sort of when you're thinking about this, put yourself in the mindset of the person looking. Yeah. And one good way to do that is to use the search bar. That guided search is just incredible for helping you figure out what people are looking for. Mm -hmm. That is always one of my favorite things to do is before posting um, anything to kind of actually do a little research on it. Like, again, one of the reasons I love using Tailwind Mm because you can, like, measure stuff. But then also, like, before posting stuff, like, come on here and look at holidays and events or look at, you know, candy cane reindeers and see what other people are doing and see what's working well. And then you have, like, a pretty good basis of, like, okay, this is what's working well for someone else. Like, I think this will kind of work with my own pin also. So I love doing that. Yeah. Yeah, and as we progress through the month, it becomes much less Christmassy. Mm -hmm. Like, much less Christmassy. And we 
it's interesting. I noticed that there's a lot of shower ideas. So there's baby hmm. showers, wedding showers, different uh, different parties too. This par- Paw Patrol is very popular. We saw this it's in so October cute. too. <laughs> So, again, paying attention to what the popular shows are and yeah. what the popular movies are, especially when it comes to kids. Yeah. And really digging in and, and finding. You could probably, with how popular Paw Patrol is, you could probably make a Paw Patrol board and it'd be <laughs> yeah. huge. People love that. I have no kids in my life at the moment, so like I'm like, what's <laughs> Paw Patrol? <laughs> I just know it's a kid's show. <laughs> I'm sure it's very popular. And so I think... I am going to state a prediction here that we are not going to see any more, you know, holiday specific things on this board for another couple of months. One thing that is kind of jumping out to me as being interesting is like, okay, for December, it does make, like, I can, okay, it makes sense that we're not seeing a ton of Christmas stuff um, later in December. However, we're not also seeing a ton of New Year's stuff. Like, mm-hmm. the whole bubbly bar you There's could just, use for New Year's Eve, like, yeah. that would be a good New Year's Eve thing, but it's not as much as I would have thought because so many people have so, like, they do the, the New Year's Eve party. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was surprised by that as well, that there was only one pin on it. And it is at the end of the month, which is where it should be. Um, um, It's just very interesting. Yeah, but also different party ideas can work for New Year's Eve. Yeah. So it's, again, you could either make it super specific if you want to target just someone looking for New Year's Eve, or you can make it more broad and Mm -hmm. say nighttime party or lights for parties, things like that. Yeah. Uh, The words that stuck out for this board are Christmas, ideas, decorating, decor, gift, party, and showers. <laughs> those wedding showers, the different parties, I think we're going to be seeing a lot more of those next month. Maybe February it'll be a little bit more red and pink for Valentine's yeah. Day, but I think it's going to be much less holiday specific from here on out, and we'll see if I'm right. Yeah. Yeah, Camilla actually, sorry, Camille has actually has a question about that. What about Valentine's Day? When do you predict that will trend? Next mm-hmm. month. I think we're going to start seeing some pins next month. January? Mm-hmm. Like early January? Throughout the month, I think. And yeah. then as we get into February, they'll be clustered around the very beginning of the month. And then it'll be all pretty regular. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. That's my prediction. We'll see <laughs> if I'm right. <laughs> okay, no time for more questions, I'm afraid. Oh, bummer. Oh, we are over. We're just chatty Cathy's. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) You get a day in the life with uh, Madison and Melissa here. We'll just keep talking. (laughs) It's not a big deal. (laughs) Well, thank you guys so much for joining us. This has been a great discussion. I've loved all the questions. I love how engaged you guys are. So thank you again. And don't forget to pick up your brand new, like brand new, Pinterest calendar and tell me if there's any typos, please. <laughs> it's really super helpful, particularly navigating Pinterest, obviously, like with everything you've been talking about. Mm-hmm. I love that calendar. And you can see if I was right in my predi- predictions yeah. on the calendar, too. And you can <laughs> follow along with me and see how it goes throughout 2017. Mm-hmm. And um, again, check out the blog post that has all the rest of the boards, and we'll be adding the important keywords to that blog post as well as this video after we eventually wrap this thing up and we're three minutes <laughs> over. Uh, and Madison, why don't you tell them where they can find you? Yeah, so you can find me. I have a website. It's called optimallife.space. Um, that's with two L's, optimallife.space. And then also you can email me at madison at optimallife.space. And again, that's two L's. And I'd love to talk to anyone about if you're curious about organizing or anything like that, feel free to shoot me an email. I'm always here. <laughs> yeah, she's really good at it. My house is actually navigatable now because of her. So uh, thank you for joining yeah, us. It was so much fun. I love doing these. And we will talk to you guys again here soon. Bye. Bye. <laughs>